welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at Pi input in Python. So what does Pi input do? Well, firstly, it allows you control to control the mouse, and it also allows you to control the keyboard. And you can also use Pi input to control and monitor these input devices. So the first thing we need to do if we're going to use it is to say pip install Pi input, and you'll see everything's already installed. So we'll say from Pi input import mouse and keyboard, and we also want to say from Pi input dot mouse import button because keyboards don't have buttons, and try Pi input dot keyboard import key because a mouse doesn't have a key. We're also going to import time. So now we're going to say that our mouse controller is to a mouse dot controller. So it just controls the mouse. And we can print the mouse controller dot position, which is going to have the x and y coordinates. So if we run Python and then the file name, you can see it says it's at this position when it's over here. And if we move it over here, you can see that the X is a lot smaller and the Y is slightly smaller because we're moving it towards the top left corner, which is zero, zero. We can also move the mouse. So we can say for I in range 100, we're going to move it five minus five. We're just going to move it five in the X direction and minus five in the Y direction. Well, that's not very smooth. So we can then just add in a, a sleep and say time of sleep 0.01. So now it will be a smooth movement for about a second. We can also click, so we can say mouse controller dot click button dot left. And if we run that, it's hard to see what's happened. If instead we say button dot right, I run it, you see that it has pressed the right button and so this menu has come up. We could also, rather than pressing a button, we could hold it down, so we could say button dot press and we could press the left button. And so now as I move the mouse, stuff is being selected because the button is down and we have not released it. Other things we can do are create listeners. So we can say that when the mouse moves, we're not going to do anything because uh, otherwise every time we move the mouse, it's going to just uh, display stuff. We could say when uh, the mouse is clicked, and we need to know the button that's being pressed and pressed. So this is whether it's pressed or not. So we say here, when it's clicked, we're going to print x, y as a tuple, the button that's being pressed, and whether it's pressed. And we'll say if the button is button dot right, if you press the right button, return false. And this is just going to end the sequence. So when it scrolls, which is going to have an xy, a dx, and a dy, you can print dx and dy, so how much is changing y. And then we actually need to create the listener. So we'll say that our mouse listener Is a mouse dot listener and when it's moved say on move is on move so when it moves call on move on press it's going to be on press on click it's going to be on click 
and unscroll is going to be unscroll. So we've got this list now. When we move, nothing's going to happen. So we didn't really need to put this in, but you can now just see that that method exists. When we click it, it's going to call this. And when we scroll, it's going to print this. But we actually want the listener to start. So we say, so rather than uh, saying, so we could say mouse listener dot start. And if we run that, it looks like nothing's happened. And that's because we've started the listener, but now nothing is going on. So instead, we can say with mouse listener as all of this, and just indent this. We can say mouse listener dot join. So that this is the wrong way around. It should be with this as mouse listener. And so now it's going to run. And you know, if I click here, it tells us the coordinates and it says, also says when it's been released. If I scroll up and down, it tells you that it's scrolling. But if I press the right button, it prints button.right. But now it returns false, so the whole thing finishes. And unsurprisingly, we can do almost exactly the same thing with the keyboard. So we're going to turn this off and create a new controller, but it's going to be a keyboard controller. And we'll see what we can do with the keyboard. And uh, I might just comment this out. It's not going to have any impact, but uh, it's not needed. So with the keyboard, we can also say keyboard dot press, and then we can just say, for example, A. Although uh, that might not be the best one to do, because keyboard controller, because uh, we're not actually controlling the module. And now, if we run it, you can see it's pressed A. Uh, so that's uh, you can see that's happening. But if we wanted to type a capital, we could say with keyboard controller dot pressed a. So that should be key. So we're going to type a capital, and we're going to say we're going to have the shift key held down, and we're going to type a, and then maybe we'll type b as well, and we'll just make it a lowercase b. And you can see we've got capital AB. And then if we say, but if we say keyboard controller dot press A, you can see that it does a capital anyway. However, if this were, for example, control key, we could copy and paste stuff, which would be very useful. And there are lots of keys that we can use. So one thing we might like to do instead with the keyboard controller is uh, create a listener because you know we created a mouse listener and you know we've got to have some functions however there are only two for the keyboard so they have on press which is going to take in a key we just print the key and on release is another function that takes in a key and we'll say if the key is key.escape equals so it's actually called key.esc which is kind of why the esc is written there return false so this is going to end our listener and we'll say again with keyboard.listener and on press is on press and on release is on release. And here we can indent that. And we want to call this keyboard listener. We're again going to say that we're going to take the keyboard listener and join it. So we're going to wait. We're going to run this code where we have a listener waiting for someone to press keys and then when someone releases the escape key it returns false 
and we can run that and uh, press some keys. And you can see all the keys either have symbols or they have uh, a name. And then we press the escape key, it finishes. So obviously this would be a really simple program to take and turn into a keylogger, which you shouldn't do because it's very legal. So you can see that using the keyboard listeners as well as the mouse listeners allow you to figure out what's going on. You can also control the mouth. So you could just create some kind of program where if you press the arrow keys, it moves the mouse around, which would be very cool. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. You've learned new ways of interacting with the computer using this kind of code. And I'll see you again at the same time next week. Till then.